Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... Yeah, hi. Matthias Jonsson, Hockey is my name, and I'm a co-owner, co-founder, you can say, uh, of the Free League. Uh, also, one of the guys behind the game that we're going to talk about today yes. in the Simba Room. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So um, I've been very intrigued about it. Recently, uh, I've been, I received a copy of Simba Room, of uh, Ruins of Simba Room for 5e. But I, I figured before we make a video about that, uh, I'm always intrigued in looking at the original product uh, with the original rules. Um, not, not, not because I dislike 5e, not at all. It's, it's sometimes I realize that when you look at the original book and with the original rules, sometimes the original rules reflects the setting very well. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, how would you describe Simba Room for anyone that has never heard of it before? Well, I, I will give, give you the very short elevator pitch that I usually bring up on conventions and such, and then we can take it from there, I think. So uh, it was a, a German uh, reviewer that said, uh, and this was in 2015, I think, when we first released the game in English. He said it's, uh, when describing the setting, he, he said it's like Princess Mononoke meets Game of Thrones. And I'm hoping you're familiar with both yes. references. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's um, Princess Mononoke. Uh, this is what I think he meant, uh, because I actually think it, it captures the, the game concept pretty well. Uh, Princess Mononoke is like Symbrom in the sense that the, the core conflict or the main theme of that movie, just as the game, is the meeting or conflict between civilization and nature. Um, and sort of the idea of what would happen if nature had the capacity to react and basically strike back against civilizations uh, strive to, to dominate and, and tame and cultivate nature. Uh, the game is also Game of Thronesy in the sense that it's a little bit more serious or adult maybe uh, than your average um, uh, high fantasy heroic uh, role-playing uh, setting. It is about people uh, rather than about heroes and monsters. So what you will find in, in Symbrom is not necessarily a grayscale kind of setting. Uh, there is black and white, but what you deem to be black or deemed to be white, good or evil, uh, is very much a question of perspective, who you are in this setting. Uh, so, so that I think sums the, the game concept up quite well. Would you say also that this game is inspired by um, maybe a, a European, certain, uh, certain European mythology as well, um, or maybe certain parts of history? Yeah, um, the, 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 the setting is, is, is very much a setting in motion, I would say, and, and it revolves around uh, a kingdom that you could probably find similarities to late medieval uh, societies in Europe. Um, they are called the Ambrians, and they have had to flee their homeland, their ancestral homeland, uh, because it has died after a devastating war. Uh, and we pick up the story about two get decades after they have set settled a new land, where they come face to face, basically, with the, the local peoples of, of that new region, uh, whom the Ambrians call barbarians. Uh, as, as humans tend to do when they come to some place where they don't understand the, the language that other people speak. Uh, and these uh, clan folks, they live in, a, in this vast forest of Davokar, which is like the, the heart of the Simbrum setting, you can say. Uh, and and <clears throat> not only clan folks you'll find there, you'll also find elves claiming uh, to have, according to ancient treaties, the right to, to protect uh, the forest from human interference. Uh, 
Uh, they even claim that th this old iron pack that once was was penned down between humans and elves gives the elves the right to 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 kill uh, humans that trespass into the wrong parts of of the tabooed areas of the forest, if you will. And the reason for this is that, at least according to the elves, I mean the Ambrians, they are not quite. Mm, sure that this is true. Uh, they really don't want it to be true because they want to get into that forest and reap its uh, natural resources and, and the scour its ruins for treasures and artifacts and whatnot. But the, the elves uh, claim that this forest covers an old ancient empire called Simbarum that yeah went went down the, the 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 wrong slope so to speak and fell into ruin and and uh, after i'm waking a lot of monstrosities and demons and abominations and these are all still sleeping under the roots of of davokar so if if humans come in and start rummaging about the elves claim that these horrific beasts of darkness will awaken and uh, yeah, I don't know, a at least at the start of the, of the game, the, the player characters are left to wonder if this is true or not. Hmm. I, I, I'm fascinated by the, the idea of the consequences <laughs> in, uh, in this game. Um, because yeah. uh, usually typical, like a, t like a typical like a uh, role playing adventure, you go into the dungeon, you wiping out all these, uh, all these creatures just to get this treasure, you come out of there, but no one really, I never thought of the the uh, the, the ecology aspect mm -hmm. behind it, like how that would affect the forest, how it affect the creatures that live there, uh, how it would unbalance things. So, being so that, uh, yes, me let me just comment that because that is one of the things that I I think makes Symbarum a little bit more serious or adult or Game of Thronesy, if you will. That uh, <clears throat> I've had several players comment on on. Uh, on social forums and also in in person to person uh, discussions that <laughs> they describe situations where they 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 their party has succeeded with their mission and they for a moment share and are jubilant and try to make their way back home with a smile on their face but then later during the session or maybe just when they have stopped playing the players start discussing okay what what did we actually do in this mm -hmm. scenario what will the consequences be uh, are we in fact the villains here uh, and to me that is actually i mean i mean it's not the only way to role play but that's for me a kind of interesting way to think about role playing where you where you not only deal with blacks and whites uh, uh, good and bad monsters and and heroes where you deal with situations that that requires you to sort of uh, think <laughs> the, the moral conflicts or whatnot that are not necessarily or always there in all role playing games hmm. So, so being that this game has a lot of gray, um, who who can you be? Uh, what 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 type of uh, hero or, or or class and race? Yeah. Uh, if I were to use that D and D terminology, yeah, uh, yeah. could you be in this in this world? Yeah, the 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 core book, which is really all you need to start playing, uh, it's a one and all core book. Um, it features four different. Uh, types of folks or races, as you would say in 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 D and D terminology, um, you can play human, either clumfolk uh, human or from the the kingdom of Ambria, uh, the the torchbearers of civilization, if you will, uh, or you can play a goblin, which in the world of Symbrom are much much like, I don't know, maybe seriously wild hobbits maybe they they live in small communities some still live in the forest and, and live like more or less like wild animals out there while others have started uh, working for uh, the kingdom of ambria in 
different respects, doing the dirty work for humans, basically. Uh, you can also play as ogres, uh, and those are mysterious uh, kinds of creatures. They come walking out of the great forest of, of, uh, of Davokar once in a while, but without any form of knowledge or memories of who, where they come from or who they were. And it is up to the people that find them to teach them a language and give them a, a shore. And that is quite easily done because they are, as ogres tend to be, big and strong. Hmm. Uh, finally, you can play a changeling, uh, which in the, the world of Symbarum is normally, you know, the trolls uh, swap out their children with, with human children and, and you have a changeling that way. In this case, it is actually the elves. Or, I mean, it's said that it's, it is the elves who do the swapping. So they take the human from the cradle and put a, a changeling or uh, a changeling child in, in its stead. And for the first up to adolescent years, this uh, changeling looks very much human, but then it begins to display uh, uh, elven features or at least alien features uh, and becomes often becomes rejects from their families and they they yeah they tend to to struggle to find their place in in society uh, if you move on to the to the advanced players guide you also find the more classical fantasy folks like elves and dwarves and whatnot but with a with a serious spin i mean speaking about the elves they are actually a very good example of what the the theme the core theme of the game does to the classic fantasy tropes because i would argue that the the, the elves more or less uh, in, uh, have the position that you would where you would find the orc in the standard fantasy game they are sort of the def default enemy because of you know their opposition towards humans clumping about in the forest and and waking its evils um yeah um that said um when it comes to to character concepts uh we you will find that simbrum lies pr pretty close to many other classical fantasy games. There are archetypes such the the hunter and the, the warrior and the mystic or mage, if you want, uh, and the rogue or thief. Uh, and each of these archetypes uh, then have, have occupations a step below uh, that are sort of suggestions for character builds. It can be the knight for a warrior, or the the cell sword, or or um, the bandit chief, or what what whatever it can be. Uh, the Symbarum character creation system actually gives you the opportunity to build the character in any way you want. So uh, this this has costs some people to actually justly describe the the character creation process as creating unbalanced balanced characters you can you can build a, a super you can build with great knowledge about the system you can you can build a really you know optimized fighter uh, but you can just the same if you want build a sidekick to that fighter that isn't that <laughs> that tends to run away when the fight comes but it probably is good at other stuff such as finding the traps or whatnot. Also, the incentives of the player characters can vary quite a lot uh, in a setting such as this one, both from the start and during the lifespan of the characters. The more they discover the, the mysteries of ancient Symbarum and the more they meet people from various places in this setting, uh, there is a great chance that the character will evolve with time. From start, you are typically typically an adventurer, I would say. Uh, 
like in many other fantasy games, uh, due to the fact that life in Umbria and in the forest um, among the clone folks is really tough. And you, you need to risk your neck to get by. You can, many start off, I know, as treasure hunters. They try to venture out in this great forest in, in trying to find a, a ruin that hasn't been sacked already and dig away while trying to defend it from other treasure hunters and from the elves that might come by and object to what you're doing or the wildlife of this gigantic uh, forest. So that, that is a very common place to start. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, so the rules. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I know we could, that could be in a separate video itself about the, the rules of the game. Um, mm. But um, for anyone that's interested, and usually when I, I think the one thing that sometimes stops people from trying out different new systems is just they're, they're, they're maybe unsure what the rules would be like. Uh, what would you say some of the highlights of the rules uh, for with some more room. One of the things that I think is a clear highlight uh, has, a, has already been mentioned, namely the, the very free and open character creation system. So you can basically start building your character. If you want to do it quickly, you pick an occupation and go with the suggestions that you find there. But if you want, you can start with one single ability or one single piece of item that you think is cool and build your character from there. Uh, and that is, I mean, yes, it, it tends to mean that, that the, the balance is not balance in especially between characters in the creation is not the most important thing for us as designers. Uh, the fun and joy of creating the character you really want to play has been the guiding star. So there, there you have a clear difference between, for instance, Symbrome and 5e. Uh, another highlight I would say is that it's, it's a very fast paced system uh, in the sense that you can, you can finish up a fight between five PCs as, and as many opponents uh, in half an hour to 30 minutes, as opposed to many other games <laughs> where you yeah, you can use a session or two to finish off one fight. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons for this is that it is fairly deadly uh, compared to many heroic fantasy games. And it is deadly not because we as designers love total party kills. Uh, it is deadly because we because violence is dangerous and we want to force the player to at least you know try to find other ways to to solve their pro problems and, and and attack the ch challenges they are facing if you are two weeks trek into the forest of davokar you should hesitate if there comes uh i don't know a family of of uh, monstrous bears or something uh, and the bears will hesitate they will not attack you unless they are super threatened or i don't know what why i said bears it could be wild boars like in mononoke or, or whatever hmm. if you if you have the unfortunate uh, misfortune of of uh, coming across one of the abominations that at least according to the elves stalk the woods woods then you, yeah, you, you basically try to defend yourself or you turn and try to run. And that is something that I think is at least set Symbrom apart from, from some other fantasy games that running away is actually a valid option and pretty often a, a really smart one. Uh, if I'm allowed to mention a final thing, it is that I can I, just really quickly, I can say that it, it is in, in its basic form, it's a D20 system uh, where you roll under uh, a set attribute 
that sometimes is modified by circumstances or opponents. Uh, and it is fully player facing, which is, I was actually a little bit skeptical about this during the design process some 10 years back. Um, the players handle all dice rolls, meaning that, for instance, they, they roll to attack against a, a set defense value of the opponent. If they hit, they roll damage against the set armor value of the opponent. When they are attacked, they roll to avoid being hit. They roll their defense value by a set you know, attack value of the opponent. And the same thing, if they are hit, they roll their, their armor against a, a set damage value of the, of the opponent. And this has proved, because there are so many benefits as a game master, in being able to focus on the narrative, focus on strategy, focus on portrayal of NPCs or monsters or the surroundings. Uh, and also the, the added benef benefit is that the players have very little downtime because they have to be engaged. They, they not just sit around waiting their turn because an enemy can attack them at any time and then they have to roll their defense. So they get super engaged while playing. Uh, so the skepticism I had from, from, from the start for this kind of player facing system and me as a GM not rolling dice, I must say it, it faded away pretty quickly <laughs> when I started using it in practice. Hmm. So, so I'm sold. Um, uh, <laughs> so what, what products are, are out net right now uh, for the system outside of the 5e um, mm. versions that are currently, that, that's currently, uh, that just came out? Mm. Yeah, um, the, as I said, the core book is really everything you need to start playing. It includes character creation, setting, uh, of, of course, uh, combat and problem solving of various kinds. It also has uh, a lot of GM guidelines and tips and, and, and a tutorial adventure. So that is all you need. Uh, if you want to build from there, there is the award-winning Monster Codex, for instance, uh, that features a lot of, of uh, not only stat blocks, uh, a huge part of the book is actually, you know, creatures that are are detailed on. I can show you a little bit if you if you have. Uh, this is actually kind of the same in the in the in the five E version. Uh, let me find a, a cool one for you. Yeah, we can take the ill goblin for instance. And I show it to you here. And then there are two spreads. And aside from, from uh, Martin Greep uh, illustration of the, the creature in question, you have small uh, in-game text. It can be uh, poems or letters or, or stuff that you as a GM can use to, to present this character or this monster to your, your players. Uh, you can use um, use them as clues in 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 sort of murder mysteries or or whatnot. There is also an adventure setup for each each of these creatures, uh, and yeah, I'm uh, if I'm talking about it much now because it's my favorite supplement to the game. So uh, if you want extra character creation and optional rules and stuff, you have the, the, the advanced player's guide, which was one of the early releases. And just uh, a couple of years ago, we released a game master's guide, which complies a lot of uh, extra rules, but also a lot of design guidelines that we have followed when creating adventures and when creating the, the setting and, and whatnot. And you have a lot of extra treasure and, and stuff that you can use in, use in your adventures. Mm -hmm. So th those are the four, so, so to speak, core books or rule books. Uh, but for me as a, as, as a designer, um, 
the flagship, I would argue, maybe my 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 co-workers will be annoyed with me for saying this, but the, I would say that the flagship is actually the, the massive adventure chronicle that is called The Throne of Thorns. And it's a six part chronicle, each book about 200 pages, uh, US letter size, uh, richly illustrated and including both uh, setting and lore material that you can use to create your own stuff, but also uh, every episode uh, includes a part of this massive adventure campaign or adventure path or whatever you choose to call it. Uh, and I have just finished writing the, the final episode, the sixth episode in this, this uh, campaign. And I, I had I promised myself that I would be done before I turned 50. And, uh, and it's like, let's see yeah a few months <laughs> months <laughs> left before that happens so uh yeah you can see the smile on my face i'm uh, super excited to see where this will land mm. uh yeah so and then there are a few other uh smaller you have the adventure collection including uh, six smaller adventures that you can use as an introduction to the to the setting for your players sort of like a mini campaign and a smorgasbord of different types of adventure styles that you can can use when designing adventures in Simbrum. Hmm. Well, since you, you brought up a little bit about the the art style in the book and that's mm. something that really like uh, draws my attention it has a very I don't know if dark fairy tales is the best way to describe mm. it it's 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 definitely unique in my opinion um uh what can you tell us about your when it came to your vision when it came to the art direction for for these books yeah the cool thing is that you can almost say that the art came first because um even if we we are a bigger team today in free league and if even if we have had other co-workers prior to I don't know if you know the story, but we are in fact two companies that merged in 2018. Um, the Symbarum game was created basically by three guys. It's, it's me, Matthias Lilia, and Martin Grip. And Martin Grip is uh, the artist. So, uh, and we started out actually one day when we had decided that we we had had sort of a break from doing role playing games as a hobby in in the after, after the millennium, uh, and we had a sort of a break. But then we decided we can't be in a group break because we really love this and we need to do a fantasy role playing game. We hadn't done that before, and we sat basically two days, or the better part of two days in front of a big TV screen linked to a computer and Googled uh, art and mood pieces and stuff. And then what we liked, we put in a, in, a, in, a, in a folder and started building the world visually together. Uh, and then <clears throat> if you know Martin, he has done most covers for, for, <clears throat> for the Freely games. He has worked on, on The One Ring and Alien and now Blade Runner and Symbarum and Coriolis and whatnot. So he's like, he is also a co-owner co in Free League. So I haven't given my artist any direction <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> he's doing that all by himself. And often it is like, I write something and I send it to Martin to be illustrated and something different comes back. And I end up rewriting the text because his vision is actually much cooler than what I have envisioned. So, oh, that's that's, that's yeah, amazing. it's pretty pretty lucky in that sense, I must say. Hmm. So, what is the, the future of the line? Uh, are there do you have uh, more maybe uh, source books, rule books, adventures mm -hmm. coming out? What's what's the future? Oh yeah, what what I can say is that Symbrom is even now that I am wrapping up the Throne of Thorns, which has been sort of the 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 locomotive of the the game line for yeah since 
Uh, I think in the US, we launched the English core book in 2016. Uh, but this locomotive, uh, the Throne of Thorns, I don't know if it's that or if it's Martin's art or whatever it is, uh, we see a constant rise in interest in this game, not least in the States. Uh, and it is actually selling more and more uh, as opposed to what usually happens to game, <laughs> games after a couple of years, you see them dwindle. Uh, so the game uh, has, has a bright future and a very committed team that will keep writing stuff and, and, and painting stuff and whatnot. Uh, we are right now in a situation where in, in the coming years now, we have a couple of uh, setting slash adventure models modules that will come out set in in uh, in the region surrounding this great forest of Davokar. Uh, but we are also in a process where are where we are trying to decide where to head next because the the game setting in the original game is geographically quite limited we are not talking a globe or even a whole continent we are talking a pretty uh, limited uh, geographical area that we instead have tried to to uh, give some depths and nuances and contrasts so uh, we will probably look at another foothold for adventures uh, a new place to explore for players that have already played the, the, the Throne of Thorns. Um, and uh, well, I, at the moment, we haven't decided exactly what that football will be. But yeah, it, 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 and, and, and actually, I think maybe that is also a question for, for Martin as well as me, if, because it depends to where, where does he and I, where we do want to go next with this game line. How can we make this theme and main conflict super interesting in a new kind of way? And uh, it will take a little time, I think, to iron out what that means. Hmm. Well, sorry for the non-answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I totally understand. So the, uh, uh, the creation process for new books are always, always never clean cut. It's always a lot of complications. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, oh, I loved it. <laughs> before, before, before we wrap up, uh, is there any last words, any, anything that I haven't asked you about that you want to share? If you are interested in in uh, in Symbarum, uh, you can always check out the the with me and Doug Shu makes these it's called the Sim Sims, the Symbarum Symposiums, where we we discuss this game uh, specifically and what's to come and and we have a lot of people uh, the fan, fans of the game posing questions you can find these on the on the the free league youtube channel so viewers uh just so you know that uh, these books are already out you can get the pdfs online you can get the physical copies at your local gaming store uh, and just in case i'm going to put the links to free leagues uh site um, or even drive through if they have a copy of it uh, of the PDFs, so that you can go in and check it out yourselves directly. Um, again, thank oh, you so much. Oh. Oh, go ahead. Can I can I please ask you to post a link also to the? We have a, a really meaty quick start, uh, free, free to download, uh, one hundred and seventeen pages, pages I think. So maybe you can link to that one as well. Oh. I, I will do so. That I did not know that. That's great. Um, so yeah, again, viewers, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, take care. S stay tuned. We're going to have another video soon to talk about uh, Suburban 5e. So take care, everyone.